Okay, so this is me. This is so to tell you a little bit about me and why I do what I do. Um, I grew up here, right down the street from the Kennedy Space Center. And now I worry about this beach, which we've already talked about a little bit, and all the things that wash up on that beach and all the chemicals that end up in our environment every day. And so for me, right now, being down the street from NIEHS is not all that different from being down the street from NASA, where we put men on the moon from the middle of a national wildlife refuge. So a privilege of being an RTP is being surrounded by people that believe what I believe, which is that great technology and environmental sustainability can coexist. So what do I specifically do is I work on the brain. So I want to understand how male and female brains are different. So it's more than just one gene, it's a whole chromosome. And I want to know how hormones shape those differences within the brain and behavior. And then I want to understand how those chemicals can come in and interfere with all of those processes to change behaviors and parts of the brain that are sex specific. So when you think hormones, you probably think puberty, right? So hormones, yeah, have an absolutely profound effect on our bodies at puberty. Hormones during puberty can also change your brain so that individuals from the opposite sex go from being super annoying to super interesting, right? So I'm interested in those parts of the brain. What parts of our brains make us social? What make us attracted to one another? Why we all sit in this room and not kill each other? And how we stay paired and bonded and committed to each other and how chemicals might interfere with and interact these parts of the brain. So to do this, I need an animal model that's also very social. So like a good toxicologist, I study rats and mice, but they're not particularly social. So I also use a species called prairie voles. So they're voles with a V not moles with the funny things on the front. Yes, you probably have them in your yard. Yes, your cat may have dragged one in at some time. But the reason that I use them is that they bond to their partner. So the two at the top are bonded, so they will choose to spend more time with each others than an alluring stranger or by themselves. And that's what makes them unique. And we also understand the neuroscience of how that bonding occurs, so we can study how a chemical like bisphenol A or BPA that you might have heard of interacts with the brain and this nervous system to change behavior. So, and some of this is very different between males and females. So these are dopamine neurons in the brain of those little critters, and normally males have more than females, but if we expose them to BPA early in development, we actually get the opposite. So in that case, females have more than males. And so effects on the brain can be sex specific. It might affect one sex versus the other, and these chemicals might also reverse sex differences that we expect to see. And that's what we're interested in we study. We also look at behavior. So this is one example of one task. This is an open field task, which I like to call the middle school dance task. <laughs> so we've all been to middle school dance. Everybody's on the edge, right? Middle school dance is like standing against the edge. And who goes to the middle at the middle school dance? It's the girls. The girls go to the middle first, just like in this picture. That's a sex difference. My animals that I study show the same sex difference. I don't stage a dance, but I can put them in this box and follow their behavior with a computer, and it looks like this trace that's down here at the bottom on the right that some of you can't see. But we just trace them around, and if you follow the trace, the girls spend more time in the middle than the boys do, and if you give them different types of drugs and chemical exposures, you can change their behavior. So this is one of the many tasks that we use in the lab to try to understand how chemicals impact sex-specific behaviors. Okay, so back to rockets. This frog was clearly in the wrong place <laughs> at the wrong time. And that's how I think about gene-environment interactions that we've talked about, right? So your genetics can set you up to either be in the wrong place at the wrong time, um, or it could protect you from some of the things in the environment. So I just wanted to use that to illustrate that point. So where in the brain have we see changes in chemicals? Lots of different places in the brain. Um, the hypothalamus, which controls all aspects of sleep and hunger and social behavior, in hippocampus, amygdala, all different regions of the brain. Um, and what other chemicals is, do we think about in the lab? As you ponder your plastic water bottle, which I please hope you will recycle so it does not end up in the ocean. We also are interested in fire retardants, but also hormone disrupting chemicals that occur naturally, we did not make them, that are in food. So soy is a hormonally active 
food. So even though we think of it as healthy, it can interfere with some of the hormones in our body. And so collectively, that's what we study and what we're interested in.